World War II is one of the most important and studied military events in history. There are thousands of investigations about the heroic deeds that were carried out, but also about the brutal genocidal mechanisms that marked one of the darkest periods of humanity. There are even relevant data that are not usually mentioned, overshadowed by the stories of large operations. One of them is everything related to what the soldiers ate on the different battlefronts throughout Europe. Therefore, in this new episode of Military History, we are going to review what the rations of the different armies were like, and how the soldiers faced famine when their own food ran out. In war, food was always one of the most important things to consider. 2,500 years ago, in The Art of War the Chinese strategist Sun Tzu recommended stealing supplies from enemies. According to the philosopher, a single ration of stolen food was worth 20 rations of your own, since it not only fed your troops, but also lowered the enemy's morale. Managing rations has never ceased to be a problem in the military, and World War II is proof of this. Perhaps the most brutal example of this was the Siege of Stalingrad, when the German 7th Army, unable to receive resources, had to resort to other ways of feeding itself. At that time, Wehrmacht troops could be seen roaming the destroyed Soviet streets in search of cats to eat, after they had consumed the meat of their own horses. The experience was so traumatic that, by the end of this battle, the Germans were throwing themselves against the bullets of the Soviets, seeking an end to their famine. But, under a more controlled scenario, how were the food rations of the armies composed? The interesting thing about World War II, in this sense, is that it was the first conflict in which hermetically sealed rations were used, such as the well-known North American K ration. Until this point, with a few minor exceptions during World War I, armies brought field cooks to the battlefield, who were responsible for preparing food for the battalions. It was in the interwar period that food preservation technology took a huge leap and allowed soldiers to load supplies into their gear. The K-ration was revolutionary in its time, and it ended up shaping the way all the world's armies feed their soldiers during campaigns. Its origins date back to 1941. The American physiologist and cell keys, who specialized in the creation of diets, began to study the psychological effects of food and food deprivation on people, and later published his thoughts. It was then that the U.S. military called on the doctor to create a new type of individual, non-perishable, ready-to-eat ration that could be easily carried in soldiers' pockets during short-term combat operations. Keyes did something very strange. Instead of staying in the lab, he decided to search the local markets for food that was cheap but provided the energy needed to maintain a soldier's physique in the stressful conditions of combat. Finally, he composed a portion of 870 grams, which provided about 3,200 calories. It was made up of crackers, pork sausages, vegetable compote, candy and chocolate. Then he tried the diet for a while with six soldiers. The men complained that it wasn't tasty at all, but Keyes found that the combination provided enough calories to keep them fit. The taste problem, of course, was closely related to his experimenting on well-fed soldiers on a U.S. base. When Karashans first made their way to airborne troops stationed in Europe, they were hailed as a gourmet wonder. What had they been eating up to that point? Mainly vegetable soups, potatoes, bread, casserole meals whose main component was rice. Before the K-ration, field cooks would throw whatever they had on hand into the pot. The scarcity of resources meant that nothing could be wasted, so the ingredients were not always in the best condition, or completely clean. The definitive version of the K-ration was implemented from 1942, and was composed of three portions. Breakfast included canned ham, chopped eggs, and meatloaf, plus biscuits, instant coffee, water cleansing tablets, and a trail mix. Lunch brought portions of meat and cheese, crackers, 15 condensed milk tablets that would later be replaced by candies, and powdered fruit juices. At dinner, the main course was preserved pork rump stew, chicken pâté, or pork sausage. Soup cubes, cookies and a chocolate bar were also added. Starting in 1943, eight cigarettes a day were added to this healthy ration. It is important to note that, to this day, 
military rations are composed in this way. Except for cigarettes, of course, which are now optional. Also, as a curiosity, it is important to point out that, during important missions such as the Normandy landings, the Allied commanders gave their troops an excellent ration, consisting of steaks, salads and ice cream for dessert. This was because many of them would never taste another meal again. But the truth is that the K ration far exceeded the food of the German army. Apart from the field kitchens, or Gulashkanon, the Wehrmacht's transportable rations left a lot to be desired. There were two types, one for shorter operations, and one for longer trips. The first was called Alarmwerkpflegum or emergency food. As its name implies, this handy ration was not intended to fully feed the soldiers, but was more of a snack. Literally, the idea was that the troops would get the necessary strength to stand on their two legs, and nothing more. Once received, soldiers had to consume it within four days, making it useful for short trips. It was made up of 700 grams of bread, 200 grams of cold meats, as well as hard biscuits, coffee, sugar, and six cigarettes. A breakfast of champions. Ideally, these rations were supposed to see the Germans between one meal in the war kitchens and another. But as the war progressed, the culinary strategy also had to change. When Blitzkrieg ceased to be Hitler's main tactic, short attacks ceased to work and campaigns became longer. And longer voyages required longer-lasting rations. This is how the rival of the K ration appeared, known as the Eisern portion or Iron ration. This set of preserves and bread could be carried in the backpacks of Wehrmacht soldiers and, like the North American version, consisted of three portions. Breakfast was very meager, represented by coffee, biscuits and some cheese. Lunch made up half the caloric value of the entire ration and included meat, vegetables, and bread. Dinner consisted of biscuits, some meat, and coffee. The Eisen portion weighed about 600 grams and did not meet the needs of the German soldiers who, on many occasions, consumed two or three of these rations per day, which complicated the administration of supplies. Although poor nutrition is not linked to the defeat of Germany during World War II, there are those who claim that food, as well as the lack of it, was essential for the Wehrmacht to weaken, especially during the campaigns in the Soviet Union. Thank you very much for joining us until the end. Stay tuned for our next video.